The Macho Springs solar facility spans 300 football fields and generates as much as 669 kilowatt hours of electricity per month, enough to power as many as 18,000 homes. State Land Commissioner Ray Powell helped broker the public-private partnership needed to get the solar plant built on state land. He says solar power's potential in New Mexico is without limit. There are plenty of private lands and, and other, other lands that are appropriate too. We're just making sure that we're proving to people it's worth doing. This is the future. This is the future for our planet. And uh, we can lead the, lead the effort here in New Mexico. But some are asking what took so long. While some have ranked New Mexico's potential for solar energy as high as second in the nation, the Solar Foundation rates the state only 22nd for solar jobs. Las Cruces Green Chamber Director Carrie Hamblin says the chamber pushed for initiatives and incentives to nurture the solar industry in the legislative session, but they didn't get any of the results they were hoping for. You know, we're looking at this opportunity of acquiring clean energy from the sun that is free and we're using these different arguments to kind of prevent that so I, I don't see that as really the best way to go about doing this. Hamblin says New Mexico regulators stunted the solar industry and potential growth when they modified utilities clean energy requirements in late 2013. We are reducing the incentives for utility companies to continue to apply solar energy to the way that they operate. Uh, then I don't think it's really the best way to, to go about in supporting the industry as a whole for our state, also supporting jobs. So I think we, we really do need to, to have more incentives in place to make this a viable industry in New Mexico. El Paso Electric has a 20-year contract to receive all the solar power generated at the Macho Springs Solar Facility to distribute to its customers in southeast New Mexico. Spokesperson Mary Beth Stevens says their use of solar and other renewable energies is higher than current and even past levels required by New Mexico energy regulators. This project was done again as a, um, on a cost competitive bidding basis with other fuel sources, so it was not done to meet a state requirement. Land Commissioner Powell says Macho Springs is an example of how technological developments in solar and increasingly inexpensive infrastructure have made state-directed renewable quotas for utilities unnecessary. It's competitive. Subsidies are very important to, to nurture and bring the industry in, uh, alive, but now it looks like it's going to take off on its own. With Macho Springs and an additional facility in El Paso on track to be operating by the end of 2000. 2014, solar will soon account for 6% of El Paso Electric's generation sources. Hamblin says without sturdier state directives, other utilities won't be as compelled to expand renewable energy generation. We do have potential for wind and we do have potential for geothermal energy. Uh, however, solar is the most accessible and easy to go ahead and put up at this moment. Hamblin is concerned the bigger economic opportunity is not being fully recognized. We have the potential to transport energy elsewhere. And if we can generate that energy here, in a state that has 350 days a year of sunshine, we are missing out on an opportunity to not only create industry here and bring money into our community, but also address needs of other areas in the country. Though all the energy generated by Macho Springs Solar Facility will stay in New Mexico, Powell says solar plants on state lands are already sending energy to other states such as California. He says he's in talks to build more power lines, but that takes time, collaboration and planning. For KRWG, I'm Simon Thompson.